Good morning. My name is Eric Brouwer, and um, I work for Civic Europe. Ninety percent of my professional day-to-day uh, -day business, and during the other ten percent, I do stuff for a wee company that Eric and I have. That's called Ease at Work, and Ease at Work is part of as a member of Civic Co-op. Um, we'll be talking for the next hour, hopefully together with you in interaction, um, about if you want to start um, implementing Civic CRM, what things should you consider uh, before, maybe before starting the actual project, uh, and see uh, how far we can get with that. And in order to do so, um, I'll, I'll talk you through what, what I think CVCRM is, um, because that's part of the context that I'm uh, talking from. Um, and after that, we'll raise a number of topics that um, I hope you'll discuss with me uh, to see how you can work with those. This Eric, if you were there during the introduction this morning, you've already met. Um, is there anything else you would like to say to introduce yourself apart from what you've already said? No, it, it would be enough now to say that my surname is Hommel and that yes, you have to be called Eric to be an ease at work. I'm afraid so, yes. <laughs> um, saying enough that we haven't got any girls in ease at work. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, that I already told you. Let's go and have a look at what uh, we think CVCRM is. Um, our, just, just figuring out who's in the audience, how many of you have not actually implemented CVCRM just yet? S sort of, okay. And how many of you are user organizations rather than implementers? Okay, virtually everyone, good, okay. Um, what we think, or what I would say, uh, a CVCRM is, um, well, for one thing, it gets you, that's I suppose the core, relevant info on your contacts, basic data. Obviously, as long as you've recorded them, all relevant activities between you and your constituents, either way. Um, and it provides you with your constituent social map. Who are they? Who are they? Who do they have contacts with? Um, because that might be relevant for your organization in order to either activate them or, or um, 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 change your interactions with them. But apart from that, Civi also provides you with um, a tool to um, document cases, cases around anything really that you were like, um, the way that you, your organization deals with questions that your constituents ask you the way that you deal with um, approaching your constituents, all those can be dealt with in cases. It provides you with your constituents' answers to surveys that you've held, and it enables you to document event participation. This you probably know very well because a lot of organizations start because that, that's what they want, bulk mailings on the basis of your contact information and groupings. It enables you to do fundraising, document contributions. What's the other one? Grants and pledges. Are you all familiar with all that functionality, what it's doing in CVCRM? Because let me know if you aren't. And if your organization has employees, it gives you insight in what they are meant to do, tasks that they have, um, and how fast or not they do it, and what the result of those tasks is, or it could in any way do that. But most of all, what it does is, who is my contact? Um, what interactions are there or have there been? And what else can we do to get more out of those contacts to achieve our goals? That's what CVCRM is, or at least in the context that we use it in, because we use it um, as a cooperative in the Netherlands mostly and in Belgium um, a bit with uh, political parties, um, 
activist groups and fundraisers. And fundraisers. That's the context, a context in which we uh, use it. And mostly we use it because of this, to achieve this um, and to get insight in this. Now, when we get to our uh, customers, that's most of the time because um, they have seen CVCRM somewhere, either Googling or with uh, other organizations, and they're interested in what can it do for us. And that's why we think the rest of the topics that we uh, raised during this presentation are relevant, because we start asking them at our first contacts. And I'd like you to, to walk through those with you. Oh, sorry. That, these things you know, that you know as well, or may know, and that it's free and open source software you know as well. And I wanted to go there. The first question I always ask when contacting a new organization is what goals are you aiming for? And really the question there is where are you now? Uh, and where would you like to be in three, four, or five years from now? And um, I don't know, not all, but like half um, the, the times I ask the question, I pull a blank. Because there is. The, the key is that as soon as a technology or a system appears in the equation of what you want to achieve, the goal suddenly turns and becomes, I have to get this system live. And really, to be able to do anything and achieve anything, you have to be clear on that question. What do I want to achieve? I want to get more from my contributions. I want to start using donor journeys. I want to get more memberships. I want a better insight. This is what I want to achieve. That's a, that's a key mm. question, which um, I would really love to hear from you, whether these are the kind of questions you are thinking about, and whether you have a clear picture of Right. I have no idea because I haven't, <laughs> because I don't know what well, exactly, awesome. where are you going? Where are you, do you want to be in three years from now? And what is the, pri what's the priority? Which part is important to you? If you can only do one thing tomorrow, what would you do first? Because all of it, yeah. too much. All of it means that you know now what And then each day, where am I on that horizon? So I would say, how quickly can we use all of it? I would say tomorrow, because you install it on the server and then you can install. The rest, I cannot answer from a technical perspective. It really goes back to what's my most important one? What, what's the thing that makes me wake up? Would you have, sorry, go ahead. We're an environmental organization, right? And we've been using an old version of Civi for years to run courses, and the original aim was to reduce um, admin time. Uh, we then found that we could do mail out, so we've been using that. Mm -hmm. We're transitioning to the latest version, and I think what we need now is more engagement with people who get involved and fundraising. Charity. Those are our next two steps. Right. Okay. So your your first goal would be to increase the level of fundraising That's for your organisation. Yes. And CVCRM would be the tool. Yes. The ambition is not the ambition is not to use CVCRM fundraising. The ambition is to get the money. Yes. 
the others? We started using Siggy about two years ago, and our goal was to increase our fundraising ability. And I think we got a bit lost because it's, it's so flexible, <laughs> so many places. Yep. Mm. We'll get, I think, yeah. to part of that we'll, answer. We'll but to get yeah, to yeah, right. yeah. Do, do you have another example? We're a consumer organization. The number of contacts, contact. right. right. Yeah. Um, capturing information, feedback about health and social care services from those, from those contacts, mm -hmm. and then being able to recall that evidence, analyze it, to be able to use it to influence commissioners and providers of services. Right. <laughs> All right. Be interesting to talk to Ilya Koster because he's yeah. been talking about analyzing the data that you have collected into usable information. Yeah. Right. We really want to know our supporters. Right. We really want to be full engaged with them and know what they need and how we can meet their needs and how we can how we can work together right. as much as possible. Right. Okay. Okay. Can you say in, in like a few sentences what went wrong if when you didn't have that clear? Because we just we had an old system. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, a second question, when we have goals similar to those that you mentioned, is now that once we've achieved those goals, how will they, our constituents, our contacts, notice? What will they notice that has changed since from now as to whenever that's achieved? Okay. And you answer the question by saying, my constituents won't know this. Then the second part of the lecture is, why do it in the first place? Well, for example, um, we're trying to reduce our attrition rate for people who are uh, subscribing annually. Okay. So, you're, okay, you're sorry, you're what? You're what? Attrition rate, attrition rate the, the people who are no longer subscribing. Right, OK. Expiring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So obviously, they would notice that money is going out to the bank account, but is that it's important that they notice that? That's a bit of my question. Right. Yeah. It's important, it, it's, 
Answering this question is a way to help and check yourself with the first question, mm. really. So, what, what, so if, you, if you want to combat your attrition rate, what would they notice? Well, they probably notice that we're better at understanding that they are leaving anyway, or better at aiming those who tend to leave and we can just give the nudge to stay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the idea is the check question on why do I want to achieve this is, is, is what will my constituents notice? On a more practical level, yeah. we're a membership organisation, so we don't have integration with our brand system mm -hmm. through our website. So for us, it would be our members can take part of that form there. They would have a profile of each of their mm -hmm. address and yeah. details and things like that. Yeah. So that would be an yeah. yeah. And hopefully, by having that, your attrition rate will drop. It will yeah. be you have less cost to feed them. That's sort of goals. And of course, the next question after that is, once you know that, then how does your organization gain from it? And it gains by lower exactly. attrition rates, less admin costs, if that's applicable, higher success rates, hmm? uh, give, if you're focusing on the right people. And of course, you want to make sure that you get there, that you do the right steps, etc. So what management information do you need to achieve the goal, to figure out what your customers or contacts uh, will notice, uh, and how you'll gain, do you gain, uh, the benefit that you want? And this could be on the level of a report to tell me what has happened, up to the very sophisticated level we've just seen with the data analysis talk by Ilya with uh, predictive modeling and that sort of marketing stuff. So you could simply try to focus on, okay, what kind of reporting do I want to see to be able to judge if my members are renewing, etc. Down to the level of, I want to predict who will answer my call for more funds. Now, the previous questions, um, basically define how you involve your staff or volunteers, people that need to help you achieve those goals. Um, they are generally people having to work in CV uh, or with CV to get to those goals. Therefore, they need to know and feel um, those goals. And that's one of the more difficult things uh, to achieve because talking about the goals and how to notice and, and all that is generally done at a management level of some sort. Um, and the people having to work in the project uh, that uh, is there to, to um, uh, uh, configure uh, the tool are not in management really. Um, they're usually the people uh, working with the tool or now working with the tools that are used today and um, have to be working with the tools tomorrow. And to get that message across to those people so that they can use that when, config when configuring the tool is one of the more difficult things um, uh, to achieve um, and takes a fair bit of time, but is essential for the success of your project. If you, what Catherine just explained about MSD is because the goal wasn't too clear, it became, I have a new system, let's do what I did at the old system with the new system. If you involve your staff and volunteers, then you have to explain to them why, what the objective is, what you're trying to gain. Because otherwise, they will immediately go back to the mode, let's do what we always did, but now in a new system. Which will kill, probably, anything you want to out of it. Yeah, so it's vital to involve your staff, your volunteers, why are we doing this? How are we going about it? What do we want from it? What will our customers know? So that's, in our recommendation, always, if you talk about, okay, shall we do an implementation project? This should be the first step. How are we going to talk to the people who do it and explain to them what are we trying to achieve? So that we can inspire them to do what they can do 
in the direction we all think we should go. Any experiences there, apart from the one you just told us? Are, are there any other experiences? Right. Right. And how how big is the whole organization? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Are the other any other experiences with involving staff or volunteers? Anna? Right. It's hard work. <laughs> yeah. 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 What? What? Why are you implementing Civina? Because of the old um, systems, or the old system is rubbish, um, and we had a huge technical bottleneck a okay. couple months back, which has pushed us to have to implement it quicker than we expected. Okay. And the goal now is to achieve what in two or three years from there? Okay, and can you define better in terms of uh, how, what does that what does that look like when it's better? have a challenge yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like yeah okay let's go to the next one that's your thing isn't it eat the elephants by bite by bite Eric yeah um, I tend to, this is a, uh, a proverb there. I got from one of my inspirational managers in the past when I had huge problems massive pro uh, uh, scenarios big disasters he always came back with, how do you eat an elephant by a bite? And at one point you get to the last one. So it's important that you, uh, uh, when you are setting out on this massive road with all sorts of difficult tasks, you keep identifying, uh, also identifying what's the next thing I have to do, what's the next bite I can chew on, and not be scared too much by loving it and wanting to put all their energy in, make sure you get the chance which people can buy. And make sure that they all know this in whatever language you use within your company, but they, they realize that this is the atmosphere that we're doing together. Everyone should always be 
capable of taking the, the next byte rather than focusing on the other. And here's another one that's really yours, but I'll, I'll, I'll discuss this one. Um, um, when you've done all the previous questions, like wh where do we want to be, et cetera, in a few years from now, this question is going to be easy to answer. Um, um, because then you will have thought about where are we going. Um, but what you find during a project that hasn't been perfectly clear about the previous questions is that what is being done is trying to get rid of the mistakes or the errors or the holes that the previous way of work had so that you get the old system, but slightly better because it doesn't have those same errors. And, it doesn't cons and that makes it difficult during the implementation because CIVI, as any other system, is a completely different system that does things differently. And therefore, you need to focus at where are we going? Um, and not at what are we doing today and how could, could we do that slightly better? If we have a custom field here and a table there, then we could do better what we could do with the current system. Any experiences with that? Oh, sorry. It's a bit uh, coming back almost to the introduction talk by Mark Ridge from the Green Party, focusing on tuning Look. to hmm. grid systems because it has its own logic, and if you try to follow the brain, it's much easier to use it whilst still keeping your own identity. And in the beginning, the, there's a big risk of making too many modifications, customizations, to make sure it does exactly what you would do now. So it's, it's a, a, a balancing act. Mm. Of course, once all those things have been made perfectly clear and everything, and then the next question is, okay, now, now that we know where we're going, what we want to do and what we want to achieve, how do we do it? And the, the, the easy example is, and you see that a lot, people in the project don't actually get time to do the project. They need to do it next to their usual day-to-day -day work, um, which is understandable. Um, but it's rather a large risk if you do it that way. Give them time. Give them a day or two days or three days, whatever time they need or you think they need to do it. Um, how many people do we take our own people to the project and replace them by external people to do their day-to-day -day work? Or do we get external people to do the project work only? Um, my preference would go to the first one um, if you have to replace them. Uh, but at least make the decision and explain why you do it that way. Um, do we have our own project leader, project manager, someone from our own staff? Even though he isn't experienced in doing projects like this, um, or do we get an external one because he exper he's experienced in doing these kinds of projects? My preference would be the first one because your internal project manager knows their organization, knows where it's going, knows the people, knows all the ins and outs that an external project manager doesn't, um, and have your internal project manager coached if he needs some skill or some uh, uh, inf um, um, uh, information, um, have him coached, but have someone from the inside where possible, but make the decision, and any decision as long as it is motivated, that's fine. Even though I have a preference, and I will try to convince you that my preference is an important one. No, but make a decision and motivate it. Can you say that as experience working with people? Yes. Why? Well, that's exactly the debate we're having at the moment. So. Whether you should have an internal or an external yeah. project manager, yeah. right. Back and wait for this 
wonderful person from our time to make life wonderful. <laughs> that's exaggerated. <laughs> but that's what happens in our world. And the only person who can make the world better and more beautiful for you is you. And that goes for organizations as well. So as an organization, you are have to take on the responsibility to get where you want to be. And yes, you can always recruit someone to bring you specialist expertise that helps you to achieve that, but not the overall project manager. We think. Unfortunately, the world is not ideal, so sometimes it needs to be important for really to do project meetings. But at least we want to discuss the risks and how you're going to <laughs> so, step by step, we're, we're growing and we're getting more experience, and also the experience that stays in house hmm. because an external leaves, and also all the experience leaves, and the organization has not learned. And what I learned from the open source philosophy is also that you create a self learning environment and that, that it's all done by self learn and that's very important. And the next question is what I want to do then. Mm. Or IT guys, and they're managing the project. Mm -hmm. So, and they do it quite, they do it very well because they they have the, the, the capability to be as a user, right, from the user side, and then from the flexibility to, to what you have on the IT side. So it depends on who the person is, what are the competences that they have. To yeah. So it's it's a bit like the other one. More company. <laughs> <laughs> but the answer is not this. It's never. Uh, Another tip in this uh, question is, uh, by the start of the project, um, everyone knows 
that we won't do any developing uh, as a starting point. So we won't develop any software, we'll only configure uh, what we have. Everyone knows that you probably will develop some, uh, hi, uh, that you probably will develop uh, some software uh, during the project. Um, but it's important for people to know that you're starting a different thing and before developing a custom software for it, um, you need to know what you've got before you start doing that. You need to know the different way of working, the different way that this particular tool facilitates or, or supports what you want to do before you can decide what custom software do you need. Um, and there's obviously topics here and there that you can say, CVCRM does not have this functionality. I'm absolutely sure that we will need it when we go live, so therefore we'll develop it. Um, but during the project, when supporting your processes, no software development at all, as a principle. Uh, yeah, we, we always recommend that we do a first round of testing with just core CVC what you can do. And based on the experiences from there, you can take a next step. But um, we would never recommend to say, we need to do this development before, we need to do this development before we can start. Because in most cases, there is really uh, a question under there based on where we were. Most of the time, it means I haven't spoken to my staff yet, and they don't know something's going to change yet, and I can only speak to them about where I want to be. If I can reassure them, this remains the same. It's not going to remain the same. So have that discussion. And then what project approach will we use? Um, what we like doing is not to define at the beginning what exactly we'll configure uh, and that's what we'll go live with, but to start with the process and the information needed, uh, work with that, and periodically, usually like one or two, every one or two months, decide, okay, this is what we are, where we are. Can we now go live or do we need anything else? And if we do, which usually is the case, we start a second cycle, very short and brief. Um, the good thing there is that people in the project organization get to become more aware of where they're going and what that means in their day-to-day -day work or what that will mean in their day-to-day -day work in the future. Um, and they'll become more aware of what the tool does and how it works and how it may support uh, you. But of course, the, the, the trick there or the risk there, uh, and management teams are not very likely to uh, be very happy about that, is that uh, at the beginning of the project, it's not very clear uh, what it's gonna cost or how long it's gonna take to get where they think they're going, um, which is true. And we never take away that fear. I think the, the most difficult thing there is that if you look at, at the history of software development, we all know that if you take a Prince to approach with waterfall development, where you think you can design, design reality behind a desk and then predict what's going to happen, we know we have a terrible failure rate with those kind of projects. But we keep on expecting when we start to say we want to know what it's going to cost, we want to know exactly what's going to happen. And we keep on pretending that if we use the right methodology, we can actually do that. But it's not true. What humans do is they learn by cycles. We get to cycle one, we go back, we say, what have I learned, what have I done, what, where am I now, what is the next step I want to take? And in our ideal approach, you try to get to that human way of doing that as much as possible. But it's extremely difficult because every control mechanism in the world will say that you cannot do that and you have to have a budget and you have to be sure on what you, where you're going to be in six months' time. Even though we all know that if we answer those questions, it doesn't actually mean that that's the budget. It means this is what we want to spend now. Well, if that's the case, then call it that. Then say, this is what we can spend now. Let's see what we can do with that amount of money. So it's a hard challenge, but don't fall into the trap and trying to make software development and implementation a predictable thing. It has never been. Read the papers. 
or at least the Dutch papers. Well, I don't think the English <laughs> papers will let you <laughs> no, somehow. Neither do I, but... Uh. You don't know about the Norwegian papers, Martin? No, they're probably the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any experience with that, how difficult it is to, say, to not say at the beginning how much it's going to cost or what exactly the result is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about it? Yeah, we got, we, uh, I'm from LES Norway, and we, we uh, went from a license system last autumn, and we had a really big fight with our board, because... Uh, <laughs> well, that's right, yes. We wanted to know exactly, but we had we yeah. another guy on the board that said he, he had got Norway's most expensive uh, uh, media education because of uh, some, some uh, open source... Uh, project that really went wrong. So we had sort of uh, quite a few guys against us. And, uh, and, and you need to sort of build the case and build understanding in the board and, and, the, and the start that, that the current situation is not something we can stay with. It's too large annual fees. We spend you know, a lot of money, huge amounts of money on, 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 on fees and there were a lot of Things that we wanted, wanted our system to do, it could not do, or it could do it uh, against at the ridiculous uh, amounts of, of, of you know, development fees. So, that, so we had to build the case that we can't be here. And then we had to sort of agree on what we wanted to do, and, and we then presented uh, CVSRM as as a one possible solution. And we had others, other systems as well uh, that that we presented and what they could and what they open source with a license and, and so we're pretty small uh, we're a small office just six people uh, part of our large international organization though but still we're small in Norway so we needed something that was small and, and scalable because we have we have high objectives for the next few years so uh, so but I think what sort of solved it for us was to build the case that what we have today is absolutely not tolerant we can't work with this you know it will hinder us, it will stop development, it will uh, uh, be an obstacle for further growth. All right. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that we really addressed already, didn't we? Obviously, you need to have a budget because no one has limited very, very limited funds. But the key is get the expected predictability out of it. Say, this is how much we're going to do. What can we do for this, that? What's it? The minimum we can achieve is this amount of money. How many people in this room would say, there's no way I'm going to get my organization to accept that? <laughs> <laughs> Yours? still do that, but use a different project approach. The fact that you have to... Oh, sorry. The fact that you have a grant and you have to show them progress and reports doesn't mean that that's the way you have to run your project. It's the way you have to move forward. I mean, I know for a fact that the way the Norwegians did the project was not always what they reported to the board. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was it. Sorry, that was the last. <laughs> okay. Any questions, comments? Sorry. Most interesting is yeah. questions. How can we help you to make your steps?
my uh, situation is unusual in that it, it, it's coming from me that the system's no good, not from the users. Because I can see that it's, uh, it's based on old technology. And, uh, and I, can, I find it very easy to win over the users of the organization, of, of, the, of the existing system, uh, but not the management. Uh, and I constantly um, come up against says no, <laughs> rather than the lady in the uh, Little Britain, right. Okay, why did they say no? Um, well, a lot of them are technical, it seems like the higher up you go, the less tech savvy people are. Mm -hmm. uh, I find a lot of management are resistant to getting involved themselves and being able to uh, interrogate systems, to work out what's going on in their own organization, so they tend to be incredibly ignorant about the but apparently, however bad things are in the technology that they're using, management's quite happy with it because it does what they want it to do. Um, well, is, that, is that the situation? From my, because the thing I would say is they're happy. And happy people are not going to change their behavior. Because they're happy. You have to build the case. Yeah. You have to make them unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. That's what, what we tend to do. We didn't find any users to ignore management as much as possible. <laughs> Which helps as well as long as they get the report. And I, I also think that the, there is a digital revolution, and revolution tends to not be supported by the ones who have the positions of authority. So, I, 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 it's not always possible, but I, I find trying to convince them a challenge that I really face most of the time. Well, I, 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 we do have an example of a Dutch housing corporation. Um, um, where management was quite happy with, with, with what was going on, but some of the staff wasn't. Um, and so we just implemented Civi CRM and started working with it. And some of the staff were so happy that they did the convincing. Um, but that was rather larger, uh, uh, an organization, uh, and that ended up eventually uh, in them uh, implementing Civi uh, in their organization. And, and some of the civic people here still developing for them um, in, in their context. But the, the members of staff did the convincing. We didn't. We, they, we were there for a completely different reason. Uh, and it just passed by that Civi would do something that could help them. So we just implemented it. We put it on a server and said, here it is, go ahead. That helped because they're using it now. But that was only one example of it. <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> yeah.
clean enough to actually to use it to spin the sort of thing. And unfortunately, the person who's put in charge of cleaning it is being sent. Right. And that's where it's stored. Um, no, but with open source, you can use the Rolling Stone mechanism because you don't have to be a big investment to install yes, it. You can yeah. start with something small, yeah. build it, etc. Yeah, yeah, and then just roll. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. We haven't got to your answer for you. Um, one of the things that I felt was really interesting was that you, you know, the questions that you um, and the questions were raised being like, how can we involve staff and yeah. volunteers? Actually, goes back for us to the first question of what are your goals? Because that is one of our goals. Yeah. We want to involve staff and volunteers on, yeah. on the CRM from the very beginning, but also you know, throughout. And we went to the beginner's um, course. Yeah. Cool. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting is that you have some kind of level of management control in terms of activity and staff activities within it yeah. that might be a way of persuading management in terms of, you know, actually, you can, it's, it's a tool for you as well, not just for those who use it. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, one of the reasons we're looking at CV is because currently we have five different databases. Yeah. By one or two people each, um, and everyone else has to ask. Yeah. And it's, it's creating the vibe across the organization of others who work remotely. So, actually, that is one of our goals. Right. Just to get everyone talking to each other because we have such knowledge. Yeah. And to share that across the organization is key. That's fairly similar to your situation. <laughs> <laughs> you have a number of databases as well. Yeah. yeah. And spreadsheets. <laughs> of course, yes. Of course. And you're looking for an answer? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just one, one of the questions I know hmm. I'm going to face um, where they, they don't understand what open source is. They don't understand that it's been going for 10 years, etc., etc. But let's say if they're not using it on a day to day basis, they're not going to understand the effect that it can have on the people that are employed in the company yeah. and how they can actually be more efficient. There is some statistical data you can get. I mean, there is data on uh, use, for example, of IT, uh, which is a bigger part of the internet is based on open source. It is going to crash in a year. Uh, so there is some statistical data here. It is full to say open, open source is not crash. You have boot software, you have crash software, and you have license software. So those are two different things. <coughs> And, and there is data out there which can help you to address that. But th there will certainly be, uh, at some companies, uh, some boards, there will be people who, who really love open source, and others there will be uh, people who come back from almost bankrupt uh, trying to fund open source. And well, we, uh, there was one story I would have shared from. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 I shared with my board, and that was when IBM years back was working on their web server.
and, uh, and the directors asked him, but who owns this? And he said, well, we no one, it. just you know, thousands of people around the world. Yeah, but what happens if it just stops working? I don't know, it just works. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, you know, with IBM, they crashed their own work, their server and started producing crushes for themselves. So, so when IBM can do it, I mean, we could do it. So, so but as long as there's serious... Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's the other side of the equation. It's a serious yeah. uh, community. If you, if you look at, at content management systems like Google, WordPress, etc., they're open source. And there's more websites built on open source technology now than on open source technology. So there's data you can pull there. Yeah. Same questions for the website as well. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions, experiences, worries? Success stories? Well, next year. Next year. <laughs> the success stories are next year. <laughs> Thanks very much.